Shalom again, my brothers and sisters. This is the real Jews of black. My name is Arya. Now I'm going to go up to the scriptures and show a lot of these lies that they've been telling out here about the Bibles for everybody. I'm going to clear that up. And that the Bible is the book of the Israelites. And that the Bible do speak about the color of the people. And that they were dark-skinned people, what you call black people. I'm going to prove that. Now, I'd like to go into Jeremiah 14, 2 in the Bible. And I want a reader to read that for me. Then I'm going to go into some books and I'm going to show that the real Jews are black and it states that in the scriptures. In the Hebrew, I'm going to show it in the Hebrew. And I'm going to show it in the English. Jeremiah, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. You see that's clear? That's the 14th chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. Read it again, brother. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. What chapter you in? Jeremiah, chapter 14. Verse 2, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. So let's check that out in Hebrew and see if it really says that. See if it really says they are black unto the ground. So I'm going to get another book, and I'm going to look up this in Hebrew and see what it says in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew. Then I'm going to bring it up close on the camera and show you what it says in the Hebrew. Now, I'm going to do that now. Like I said, in Jeremiah 14, 2, it says, Judah, Martha, and the gates, they have language. See, this is the Hebrew Bible written in English and Hebrew, and it was put out by the Hebrew Publishing Company. I'm going to show the front of that in a minute. This is Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. Now I'm going to go down on the words and show you that's exactly what it says. That's Jeremiah, the 14th chapter there you're looking at. That's on the line of the TV. It says, Abala. Hold the book straight. Hold the book still, brother. Don't move the book. I move the camera. Abala Yahuda, which means mourneth Judah. Washa Aria Amalu Quadaru Laadets. Kidaru Laadets. See that word Kidar right there? Don't move the book. See the word Kidar? That word Kidar, hold the book still, brother. That word kiddah means dark skin or they. And the next word is la'adets, to the earth. Kiddaru la'adets, dark skin or they unto the earth. So you so-called Jews that's looking in, you see exactly what I'm telling you. You see if any rabbis is looking in, you see exactly what I'm saying is correct. That word kiddaru means dark skin or they, la'adids unto the earth. Who's dark skin to the earth? Judah, Yahuda. That's who's dark skin to the earth. That word kidaru, la'adids means dark skin or they unto the earth. You got a kwa, a da, and a ra. Now we're gonna look that word up in a Hebrew, ancient, uh, uh, Hebrew English Bible dictionary and see what it says. Now, I'm going to show you these two words, one in the Tanakh and the other one in the dictionary. See the kida? See, you got a kwa, a da, and a ra. What does it mean? Dark colored. To be dark colored, brother. To be dark colored. That's what that word means. To be black. That's what it also means. Now, this is the word over here, the same word. A kwa, a da, and a ra means to be dark skin. That's what it means, to be dark skin. 
dark colored named dark skin. See, that's crystal clear. That's the same word. Same word. Hold the book still, brother. Same word there. And that whole line says, Monif Judah, Washa Ira Iria, Amalu Quadaru La Alex. Darker there unto the earth. Judah Monif and the gates there of language, dark are they unto the earth. Dark skin are they unto the earth. That's what it says. Like I proved over here what the word means. Dark colored. And it also means to be black. Okay. Uh, I'm showing you the Tanakh here. It says Torah of the Prophets. Okay. And writings. Uh, 24 books of the Holy Scriptures according to the Masoretic Masoretic text, text, English version, translated and revised by Alexander Hakavi, Volume Two, Hebrew Publishing Company, New York. To show you. Now I'm gonna get the other book and have him read what it says in the other book. Okay, this is book one of the Tanakh. This is book one of the Tanakh. The 24 books of the Holy Scriptures according to the Mosaic text, English version translated and revised by Alexander Hakavi, volume one. Okay, now brother turn the page. And let's see what year this was. See what it says there? Copyrighted 1916 by the Hebrew Publishing Company, New York. See, I'm showing you the facts so there cannot be no disputation. Preparatory note, the English translation accompanying the Hebrew text. Don't move the Bible. Don't move it, period. Just hold it still. I'm going to move the camera. The English translation accompanying the Hebrew text is the authorized version otherwise known as the King James Bible. The publishers have deemed this version a fit composition, a fit companion to the original text because its language is regarded as classic English and because it is held in great esteem. You see what I'm saying? One time one of, we was downtown speaking in, uh, around Delancey Street. This was many years back. Me and another brother, uh, the elder brother named Masha, the head of the school, we was down there speaking. And the so-called Jews came up on us and said it was from the Jewish Defense League. And that what are we saying that the Jews are black? So I took the Tanakh out of the, out of the bag and had him read where it says in Jeremiah 14 to Judah is black under the ground. He looked and he looked. He didn't believe that was there. And he looked and a friend with him said, yeah, it's there. That's it. It says black under the ground. Then they left. They left and they was in total confusion. So they must have went and talked to their rabbis about that because they didn't know that was there. To show you how they're not teaching the people, how they lied. I'm going to show you many things, the archaeology and so on. Like I just showed you there, the English translation accompanying the Hebrew text is the authorized version, otherwise known as King James Bible. The publishers have deemed this version a fit com companion to, be the, to the original text because its language is regarded as classic English and because it is held in great esteem throughout the English speaking world. Okay, what is this I'm reading from? What is this about? The Holy Scriptures in Hebrew. The 24 books of the Holy Scriptures according to the Mosaic text, English version translated and revised by Alexander Hakavi, volume one, Hebrew Publishing Company, New York. When was this printed?
copyrighted 1916 by a Hebrew Publishing Company in New York. Now when you get the King James Version, make sure you got a King James Version of 1611. Now we're going to step off and go to another book. Still put now we're going back to the word Kedah that we showed in the other book to show you, again, dark colored to be black. Kedah. The word Kedah means dark colored to be black. And where is this found? This is found in, let me look at the top of the page, brother. This is Hebrew and Chaldean Dictionary. Turn to the front page. Ex ha husib, uh, ex -husitive, uh, concordance uh, uh, or the Bible showing, let me get it clear. Bible showing every word of the text of the common English version of the canonical books. Every occurrence of each word in regular, uh, or regular order. Dictionaries of the Hebrew and Greek words. See, this book, is, this book is super good. So what we just showed you, what the Hebrew translation of that word was into English. Let's go back to the word again. Yeah, let's go back to the word. Kedah, like I showed you. The word Kedah means dark colored. To be dark colored, which means dark skin, to be black. That's super plain. See how plain that is? Super plain, super clear. Kedah, dark colored, to be black. Now the book I'm in now is a Smith Bible Dictionary. And it's a very old Smith Bible Dictionary. We're gonna get the date of this Smith Bible Dictionary. The date is in the front, right, because I? Right. Okay, we're going to get the date of this Smith Bible Dictionary. Now see the word right there, Kedah, that circle? See, that's the same word like I showed you in the other books. Now you see what it says there? Hold still, brother, still. Hold still as you can. Black skin. See what that says? Black skin. Black skin man. That's super clear. That's super clear. Black skin man. Kedah. What does it mean? Black skin. Then it says black skinned man. You can't get around that, uh, you so called rabbis, you liars, you, you gutter rats. <laughs> you gutter rats can't get around this. Run around calling yourself us. The Jews were black. You dumb, ignorant, so-called white people run around talking about you Jewish. You're a bunch of gutter rats. <laughs> and you're going to be brought down. Because the truth is coming out. Because the so-called Negro is the real Jew. What does that word say? Kedah. Black skin man. Black skin, black skin man. We got your number, Esau, because you're the children of Esau. You're not the children of Jacob. You're the red one. You're not white. You're not an off-white. You're not a dirty white. You're red. I'm going to show that as when we sit down and go back and read the Bible. But you, my viewers, you see how clear that is? You out there in the audience. You see how So you in the audience, you in the audience, you see what I mean? Do you so-called Negroes see this? This is crystal clear. Kedah. What does that word mean? Black skin. That's super clear. 
black skinned man. So like I said, these gutter rats calling themselves Jews, they are not the Jews. You so-called Negroes are the real Jews. Now what's the name of this book? This is a, in a dictionary, Smith Bible Dictionary. Let's go to the front of it. Okay, bear with me, audience. Bear with me. See what it says there, Dr. William Smith's Dictionary of the Bible. Now, the ones that got up to date now, that they done revised and brought up the date of Dr. Smith's work, they done took that word out altogether. They done took the word Kedah out altogether, so they wouldn't have to say black skin man. This, this so-called white man is a real devil. He tried to change history around, upset history, and so on. Now, let's see what year, let's see what year this was. Publish, turn the book like that, yeah. Publish, New York, published by Heard and Houston. Uh, Cambridge Riverside Press, 1869. 1869, we got the proof on you devils. We got the proof, the archaeology proof. We got the dictionary proof. We got the encyclopedia proof. We got the Bible proof. We got the Tanakh proof. We got the proof on you devils. Ain't a damn thing you can say about this proof. And you, of the audience, you so-called Negroes out there, you should be waking up behind these programs that I'm showing you every week. You should be waking up. There should be a bell going off in your head someplace. Your brain should be coming alive on the information that you've been getting. Straight up facts, straight up proof. Okay. Now we're going, now we're going into the Holy Bible and show you again the Holy Bible containing the Hebrew and Greek scriptures translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations diligently compared and revised. The text comfortably to that of the edition of 1611, commonly known as the authorized or King James Version. That's the one you got to get, the one that says 1611, because they're changing these Bibles around. Where it says Judah's black underground, they done put her gate sink into the ground, took black into the ground out. They took the Kedah out because they knew that meant a dark-skinned man, like I'm going to show you right in the back of this Bible, this same Bible here. See the word Kedah right in the back of this Bible? What does it say? Dark skin. See, that's the same word, kidah, dark skin. Only in here they spelling it with a K. When it was a qua, kidah, dark skin. That's super clear. That's super clear. Now, let's go back in the front of this Bible and show you something else in, the, in this Bible. Guess what? Let me turn over the page. Guess what? This is a Bible put out first by the Watchtower. <laughs> by, what's his name, Russell. Mm -hmm. Russell. Yeah, Publishers Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York Industry, International Bible Students Association, Brooklyn, New York, USA. Now, but they put the right one out here. But now they done went around and they done changed it and they done changed the verses and the wordings of it. <laughs> That's in all these other Bibles and the Green Bible and all that. But this was the right one that they put out to 1611. The Holy Bible. The Holy King James Version. Turn back to the front of the page. So the Watchtower people are full of, you know what? They're full of. They're imposters. They're liars, a bunch of liars. Because this Bible is talking about Israelites like we've been showing you. 
the text comfortable to that of the edition of 1611, like we showed you in Jeremiah 14, 2, Judah's black under the ground. Let's get it in this Bible. Jeremiah 14, 2. Let's get it in this Bible. And let's see. Like I just showed you, this Bible was put out by the Watchtower. This is the correct one that the Watchtower put out. The ones that they're making now, they're messing up. They're taking the part where it says Judah's black under the ground out of there. And they're putting her gates sinking to the ground. See what it says there? Judah mourneth. And the gates there of English. Hold it still right there. Hold it still. Be as still as you can be. Judah mourneth, and the gates there of language. They are black unto the ground, just like we showed you. Now, in the new Bibles that these Watchtower people are putting out, they done took that out. And the Good News Bible, they took that out. <laughs> but we got you, Mr. White Man. We got you in your lies. Mr. So-called white man, because you're not white. You're not an off-white. You're not a dirty white. You're really rich. You're the red man. Who are you? Esau. Give me Genesis 25, 25. Then after this, we're going to sit down. Genesis 25, 25. Let's see what the Most High say about the so-called white man who is really Esau. And let's see what his color is. See what it says there? And the first came out red, not white, red, all over like a hairy garment, and they call his name Esau. Let's start up here so you can see what's happening. And Isaac entreated the Lord in the 21st verse, entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? The Most High blessed me, why is the bell going on my stomach? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. We know who that is. The so-called black man, black woman is stronger than the so-called white man, white woman. And the elder shall serve the younger. The first one to come out was to be a slave to the younger. And they're going to be our slaves. We're going to put them in chains when their system go down. When our days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in a womb. And, but they were not identical twins. And the first came out, what? Red, not white, red. All over like a hairy garment, and they call his name Esau. Now let's move down here, and let's see something else, then I'm going to sit down. The 30th verse. Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. What was making these lentil beans red? Rare meat. We're going to read about that in Hebrews, in the New Testament, that Esau sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. Rare because he's rare. That's why the Most High make him like rare meat because he's rare. He's not done. That's why he go out in the sun and try to get a tan. He burn up trying to get a tan. For I am, a, I am faint, therefore was his name called Edom. And the word Edom means red. There's a little five next to that. Let's go in here and see if we can find that. Let's see if we can find that. Let's hold the book still and I'll go down and find it. I'll find it, because we got Esau. We got him. Huh? We got him. Let's go up. Point to it, brother. Point to it. Let me, let me go back. Point to it. Let's find it. See what it says, five there? That is red. That is red. That is red! What chapter? Chapter 25. What did it say what, for that little five? That is red. So what color is Esau? Red. That's the color of the so-called white man, not white. And he's known as Esau. Okay, brothers and sisters. So you see what I was showing you there? You see that we got the facts. People be talking out in the street that we are... Uh, talking so rough about the white man and so on and all this, but you see that we have the facts. 
and we're teaching the truth, and they need to be spoken rough about. When you so-called Negroes going to wake up and get yourself together? Why are you always trying to protect the so-called white man, and you see he don't care about you? You see the most people that's locked up is you so-called Negroes, West Indian, Puerto Ricans. You're not bringing the drugs in the country. You're selling the drugs to each other being stupid and foolish because you say you ain't got no money and that's the only way you can make some money by destroying your own people. But the people that's bringing the drugs, that, that's pushing the drugs, the real drug pushers, is the government. The government of the United States of America is the real drug dealers. And they couldn't deal drugs on the street without the policemen being involved. And the policemen, the police department could not be involved if the government was not involved because the government can shut the police department down. Do you so-called Negroes understand? Do you people in this country understand that? The police department couldn't be out there selling drugs and help pushing drugs without the government being involved. Now let's go down to the bottom line of this thing. The so-called Negroes and West Indian Puerto Ricans out there could not be pushing the drugs without the government being involved in this. Like I was saying earlier, it's time for you so-called Negroes to wake up. Seriously, it's time for you to wake up. This Bible is talking about you. Not talking about the so-called white man. You know, it isn't it's not talking about the Africans because they're black skin. He's not talking about them. They're not even one. That's why they was gathering our four pounds selling us to the so-called white man. You so-called Negroes are bugged out on this trip talking about you Africans. The Africans ate your guts, Negro. Then you gonna wake up. And you're dealing with these so-called Africans out here on the street. When you get in a cab with them, you gotta curse them out and all of that. And you see that they're not like you. Their spirit don't click with yours. But you, Yet you hard-headed, simple, so-called Negroes, you and your so-called false scholars, because there ain't no scholars, these so-called blacks run around talking about they scholars, and the historians run around talking about they Africans. You ain't no Africans. The African spirit don't click with you. The Africans were selling your forefathers and your foremothers because we're not African. It's time for you dumb, simple, so-called Negroes to wake up. I'm telling you straight. That's why I'm saying dumb, simple. Because you're dumb and simple and ignorant. So the knowledge, the only way you're going to get knowledge is get into this Bible. This is your history. You're the Israelites that it tells you in the book of Deuteronomy how you were brought here on the slave ships. In Deuteronomy uh, 28, chapter the 68 verse, it tells you straight up how you were brought here on the slave ships, and who was brought here on the slave ships. The so-called white man back before the 40s used to call you so-called Negroes, and some of the writings tell about it, call you Jakes. Hey, Jake. Hey, Jake. And they were doing some of that in the 50s, too. Hey, Jake. Why were they calling you Jake? Because that's short for the children of Jacob because you are the children of Jacob. You're not Africans, just like I said, but you, you're mad, you're super mad on this African chip. Run around talking about you Afro-Americans. Run around talking about you Africans. And them so-called Africans ain't told you to come back to Africa yet. And when Harriet Tubman with a group of uh, uh, slaves, which are Israelites from here, we went back there and with the president of this country during that time, they had to fight the so-called Africans and set up that state they got over there in Africa, which was originally set up by so-called Negroes called Liberia. Okay, where they called all the uh, government officials uh, by the name of Tubman all the presidents by the name of Tubman because the blacks came from here to set that up and they were Israelites and them Africans fought them because they knew that they were not their people and that they didn't belong in that area because you're not Africans. 
some of you so-called niggas, you're going to have to get off this mad trip. The, one of you that, the ones of you that can't get off this mad trip, that you Africans, the most high are going to do away with you, because you're the Israelites. The reason why we're in this captivity is because we broke the laws of the most high. Now I'm going to go back to the scriptures. See, we straight up showing you facts. And I'm going to show you a lot of archaeology on that too. And the brother's been showing you archaeology on that and bringing out books that the so-called white men have written telling you that they lied about a lot of things. Straight up we've been showing you this. Ain't nobody doing this. Ain't nobody showing you the information and the history like we're showing you. Nobody on this planet Earth but the Hebrew Israelites coming out of 1 West on 25th Street. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the Psalm of Solomon and see what it says in there about the word Kedah, showing you that it means dark skin again, and that the children of Israel were dark skin. And I'm going to show you in the archaeology records. If the brother read, my, my reader here, he announced his name, Shailah, priest Shailah. Song of Solomon 1 verse 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Right, see what he said? I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar as the tents of Kedah, as the curtains of Solomon. Now, so you got some scholars out there talking about this is not Solomon speaking. You're a bunch of liars. Solomon written the song of Solomon. This is not a woman speaking here for you so-called Jews and you false historians and you false Jews, you gutter rats. This is Solomon speaking. What does it say in the first verse? The song of songs which is Solomon, meaning that Solomon did the writing here. You dumb, ignorant, so-called scholars, as you call them yourself. This book was written by Solomon. The song of Solomon was written by Solomon. Now I'm going to show this on the camera. If the brother, if the brother can come up on the scripture here, if you can get a close up on it. See right there? See what it says there? That's as close as you can get it. You pull the gray thing. Okay. See what it says? I am black, but calmly. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of King God. See that same word again? as the curtains of Solomon. Now go back to the pan back over to the first verse. And let's see what it says in the first verse. The song of songs, which is Solomon, meaning Solomon written it. And it says the same very thing in Hebrew. For you dumb scholars out there, you gutter rats got nerve enough to call yourself Bible scholars and you other so-called Europeans. You ain't no scholars. You're the liars that the Bible speak about. But we're up on all your lies and we're going to bring the truth out, Esau. You're the children of Esau. Okay. Cut it a minute, brother. Genesis 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Wait a minute. Now you see what this is saying? That the Most High is the one that caused them to struggle in the womb. Back up to the 22nd verse, and the children struggled together within the womb. 
within her, meaning in, inside her womb, inside her stomach. They were fighting. Then she wanted to know if the Most High blessed her. Why was this battle going on? So in the 23rd verse, the Lord said unto her, two nations are you. Otherwise, I did it. That's why they're fighting, because I made them two different nations. And they're going to be separated from your bowels, two different manner of people. All right, go ahead. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And we're stronger than the so-called white man or so-called white woman. The so-called black man and so-called black woman are stronger than the so-called white man and so-called white woman. Continue. And the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And it said that the elder was going to serve the younger. It also said there were twins in her womb, but they were not identical twins because they were two different nations and two different manner of people. Now the 25th verse says, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Red. Red, not white, red. When you look at these so-called white people, I wonder if you so-called Negroes are really seeing Because they're not white, they're not off-white, they're not a beige, they're not a dirty white. Every so-called white man and so-called white woman and their children are red from the top of their head to the tip of their toes. So you can understand their eyeballs are white, but their skin texture is red. I had one so-called white man say, well, yeah, I'm pink. And in the ancient termination, pink, light red, dark red, was red. So that's red, not pink. They're red, 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 red. When they try to get a tan, they get redder before they get dark brown. What, why are they red? Because they have a lack of brown pigment. They have lost the pigment. That's why they're red. Who took this pigment from them? The Most High, whom you call God. The Most High, the Supreme Being, Yahweh, which is his real name, took away their color from them. Because they had a particular part to play on this earth, and that was the devil. Okay, and then it says, after that came his brother out, and his hand took all of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. They didn't mention his color because he was the same color as everybody else. Like it said in Jeremiah 14, 2, Judah is black unto the ground. And when it said Judah was black unto the ground, it's also telling you that Adam and Eve, because Adam came where? Out of the ground. That all the people in the beginning was different shades of brown. Until Cain killed his brother Abel, then the mark was put upon him which is the same mark that's on the so-called white man now, leprosy. Then that group got killed in the flood, and the group that came across was Noah, Ham, Shem, and Jephthah, and they wives, and they was all dark brown skin, because Cain's seed had been pushed up into the land of Nod, which is today, which was on the east of Eden, Eden was Palestine. When you go and you plot the rivers, that is say the four rivers and the river that ran straight up and down you come up with pa Palestine because they tell you that the river that can pass the whole land of Ethiopia that's the Nile and the other river was the one that can pass through the Saudi Arabia which is the Red Sea and the two rivers at the top was the Euphrates and the Tigris and the Euphrates is clearly marked on the map and in the middle of all that it's Palestine and the river that ran up straight down up Palestine was Jordan. And it used to connect with these four rivers. Two at the top, the Tigris and the Euphrates, and the two at the bottom, the Nile and the Red Sea, before it flooded. So we got the history down pat. Now on the east of all of that, on the east of Eden, on the east of Palestine, going up towards the northeast with me, is Mount Seer. No, I'm sorry, is the Caucasus mountain. That's why they're called Caucasian. Because they were pushed up into the Caucasus mountain, as we're going to read in the book of Job. 
When they were living down in the Middle East, they used to live down at the bottom of Palestine, a range of mountains called Mount Seir, ranging from the Dead Sea to the Red Sea, which is the Gulf of Aqaba, which was called Mount Seir. But later on in history, Esau got pushed up into the cave like his foreparents, his forebearer, Cain, his spiritual forebearer, Cain, got pushed up into the same caves, which is located in Georgia, Russia, which is called the Caucasus Mountain. That's why they call Caucasians. And the reason why they were put in those caves is because they have a lack of brown color and they are red because they don't have their pigment which is the brown color. That's why the first came out red here, all over like a Harry Garland in the 25th verse. And they call his name Esau. When you look up the word Esau in ancient Hebrew, it means wasted away as he. So Isaac looked at his son coming out and he said, where's his pigmentation? It's wasted away. Like his color was left in the womb. Let's read up on that. Let me read this 30th verse in we go to the other part in the book of Obadiah, and then I'm going to read up on what leprosy look like. Verse 30. What does verse 30 say, bro? You can back up the camera. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. No, let's go on the book. Yeah, go ahead, read on for I am faint, therefore was his name called Edom. Now what was in this, this is lentil beans, what was in it making it red? Because lentil beans is not red. So what was in it that was making it red? Red meat. Can we prove that? Yes. We're going to go in the book of Hebrews. What is it, 12, 16? Hebrews 12, 16. Read that. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. Wait a minute. What did he call the so-called white man? A fornicator. Let's get the clear understanding of what the most high mean. Did he mean that he was just having casual sex? Or what kind of sex did this mean? Homosexual, bisexual, lesbian sex. That's what it was talking about. Because they, they are nation they have become a nation of homosexual, bisexual, any kind of sexual, trisexual freaks. And you see that every day on TV, they're showing you. And every day when you go to work down there with them, you see it. They're homosexual, bisexual, any kind of trisexual. That's what they are. And what is that? Read the statement again. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. Wait a minute. Is a faggot something to be looked up to? Is a homosexual, bisexual, uh, lesbian something to look up to? No. What is it? Profane. Profane. Read the whole statement again. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Okay, there's your meat right there. What kind of meat was this? Red. How do we know it was red? Because it tells you in the book that it was red and that Esau was named after the meat. Why was he named after meat? Because he was red. Let's go back to that in Genesis 25, 30. Genesis 25, verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. For I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Is there a number next to that, that word Edom? Edom, number five. And what does it say? That is red. Okay, meaning that he was red just like the red meat that he was getting ready to eat. And the most high made him like rare meat because he's rare. That's why he likes rare meat. Because the most high interjected that into his system. So that he would like rare meat. Why? Because he's rare. So what do he try to do? He tried to go out and get done. 
and he almost burned his simple grind up trying to get done. <laughs> and this doneness is only for momentary. His doneness soon wears off. So now they're making pills. They're trying to prolong this being done, which is being drowned. Because spiritually and, and intelligently, his scholars know the truth. His biblical and archaeology scholars know that they are not white people, that they are the children of Esau. That's why they try to hide a lot of history on the Edomites. <laughs> That's why they try to hide a lot of archaeology on the Edomites, because they are the Edomites. They're the king of the proved that they're the Edomites. Now, I just said, Genesis 25, 25, that the phrase came out with, Harry all over like Harry Garman, and he called his name Esau. What does the word Esau mean? Wasted away, is he? Because his brown pigmentation, his brown color, to make it simple, was wasted away and left him. Red color. Then, in the 20, uh, in the 30th verse, it said that Jacob was sitting there making some party. The most I had him doing that. And Esau come out of the field faint. He didn't find nothing to eat. He didn't find no, he was a hunter. He didn't find nothing. He didn't find no animal. So he was hungry and he was faint. And he saw Jacob cooking this meat. Yeah, just like he liked it. <laughs> and he went over there and gobbled him up something and stole his birthright. Because most of I had him do that. Because we were supposed to get the birthright anyway. But he was supposed to come out first because of the prophecy. So then he was called, he was named after the meat, Ram, Ram. Now, Obadiah, Edom. Obadiah. Tell him where you Obadiah what? Obadiah, the first verse. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Yeah, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Let's go over that again. Let's go over that whole thing again. Back it up with the gray button. Back, back it up on that side with the gray button. Let's go over that again. Read it again. From the top. Obadiah, first verse. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. So now we're talking about Edom. We just proved that Edom is a so-called white man. So this is a subject that the most high gave Obadiah here, yeah, Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. So. Obadiah was talking to some of the other prophets and said, we heard a rumor from the Lord, that's this prophecy we, that we read here in the book of Obadiah. This is the prophecy, this is the rumor that the Most High gave them. And an ambassador is sent among the nations. During uh, the 50s, Gamal Nasser of Egypt was set to rise up against the so-called European in Palestine and the one called himself Jewish. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. And he said, let us rise up against her in battle. The Arabs rose up against the so-called white man that was in Egypt and against the so-called Jews that was in the Middle East and Palestine, talking about their Jews. And NASA spoke during the 50s and said, how can you be Jews? How can you leave here black and return back white? He said, I don't accept you. You are imposters. And they are imposters because you so-called Negroes are the real Jews. Let's read a little faster, brother. You read a little bit too slow. Behold, I have made thee small among the nations. And the so-called white man is small amongst the nations. Thou art greatly despised. They hate your guts. And they're going to show you that on a much larger scale. You think the World Trade Center was the end of the deal? Uh-uh. That ain't the end of the deal. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Now this is letting you know who it's talking about. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. 
What is that talking about? The Caucasus Mountains. So who are we talking about? The Caucasians. So this is straight up telling you what the scripture is talking about. The pride of thine heart. Your mind has deceived you, Mr. White Man. Thou who? Thou that dwelleth in the cliffs of the rock. You cave dwellers, because that's what the name Caucasian means, cave dwellers. You're the one that he's talking about. It's going to make it more plain. First, it gave you a description of what you look like. Red and hairy. Who does that fit you, so-called white people? Then it says, Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, who does that fit you, so-called white people? Whose habitation is high. Your buildings are the highest in the world, Mr. So-called white man. Maybe they'll be in America. Now it's bringing it to America. Who loves America? You so-called white people. That's who the Indian, the so-called American Indian is mad with because he wants you to give him his land back and get the hell out. Because you know, you ain't no Americans. This ain't your land. You on stolen land with your chest stuck out. Talking about you, just man. You're the criminal of the planet. Okay? That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So let's look around the world. Who can say that? I ain't talking about the Arabs. They ain't talking about the Chinese or the Japanese, really. They ain't talking about the Africans. It, it sure ain't talking about you so-called Negroes. So who got the technology that's so advanced that can put everybody under the gun? The so-called white man. But the most I see, he, he's going to go down anyway. Read that statement again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? That's the so-called white man. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, whose emblem is the eagle? Let's check it out. Pull out a dollar bill for you ones that don't understand. What is on that eagle? What is the emblem of America? A bald eagle. Let's go back to the beginning of the so-called white man, the Greeks. Did they have the eagle? Yes. The Romans, which are the Italians, did they have the eagle? Yes. The Spanish, the Germans, the French, the Russians, the British, they all had the eagle. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Now who's got space travel? Who's out there in outer space? There's too many clues showing that the so-called white man, see that's the back of the dollar bill right there showing the eagle. Too many clues. So who are the Edomites? The so-called white man. That's straight up. Now, cut for a minute. Okay, now we're going to the 73rd Psalm to show that the so-called white man is the wicked. And he is the one that the Bible is speaking about as the devil and the wicked. Let's examine this 73rd Psalm that David spoke about here. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as of a clean heart. How can you have a clean heart by getting into the scriptures and learning your history because you're the Israelites and learning the laws, the dietary laws in here, learning the laws of the Most High, not the laws of the so-called white man. Drop Easter, drop all that so-called Christmas garbage because the Most High is against all of that. Because Christ didn't raise on on Easter Sunday. He rose on a Wednesday afternoon. He was put to death on a Wednesday afternoon and he rose on a Saturday afternoon. Three days and three nights exactly. Because he prophesied that he would lay in the grave for three days and three nights. So how are you in your mind, in your simple mind, because that's what it is, simple and dumb, how in the world are you going to get three days and three nights between Good Friday evening and Sunday morning? You people ain't figured that out yet. What's wrong with your brains? It's mathematically impossible to get three days and three nights between Friday afternoon and Sunday morning. Don't you know that? But they kept the holiday called Ash Wednesday because Wednesday was when they put him to death. On a Wednesday afternoon, and it rose on a Saturday afternoon. 72 hours, three days and a half. I mean, three days. Exactly. Three days and three nights, exactly. Now, getting back to this verse. The second verse. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well near nigh slipped. 
which means wear me a slip. For I was envious at the foolish. You so-called white people are the foolish. The most I call you a foolish nation in another part of the scriptures. You are the foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, and you are also the wicked, you are a wicked fool. You, you done been out a little short time in rulership, and you done polluted the air, the water, the earth, the animals, people's minds with your lies, where you done set up laws for something else against nature, because a man's supposed to go with a man, not a, I mean, a with a woman, not a man with a man. And a woman's supposed to go with a woman, with a man, not a woman with a woman. That's what you got going on. You got women going with women, men going with men. And you're trying to make it right. How the hell are you going to make that right? That's against nature. For I was envious at the foolish. You're a fool. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Even though you got all this riches in your kingdom, your kingdom is polluted. Everything in it is polluted. The air, the water. And who polluted it? You, dummy. And your kids are eating this pollution and breathing the pollution. So how are you going to be a wise man? Four verse. For there are no bands in their death. You used to have died a whole lot. But now you died a whole lot. Crack, plane crashes, uh, earthquakes. You died in a, in a lot now. You used to have died a lot. But they stand as firm. They are not in trouble as other men. That's clearly showing you is talking about the so-called white man. Because the other nations are catching hell. Look how backwards they are in India and the streets and all that. Cows running all over and they starve and they're filthy as they can be and so on. In other places. So just like it said here in the fifth verse. They are not in trouble as other men. And one time you weren't in trouble as other, other nations, but you are now. Neither are they plagued like other men, but you're being plagued now. You're starving most out, bringing floods on you, hurricanes, everything. <laughs> your system is going down, your economy is going down, you catching hell. All your big shots, they had houses and all of that, in the, and these working in these big shop jobs, they out of work and all that, were falling down. The movie Falling Down was about. Here's a guy who was working on miss, missile technology. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy, this, the scriptures is hitting you. They are not in trouble as other men, like in the fifth verse again. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence! covers them as a garment because you stole this land, America. This is not your home. You're not Americans. You stole everything you got. The seven verse. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. You. This is definitely talking about the so-called white man. Ain't talking about the so-called Negro. Ain't talking about the African. Ain't talking about the Chinese and the Japanese because they just got up on the carpet. They just got standing. The Japanese just got standing up. They are corrupt. That's definitely talking about you so-called white people. They, could, they have more than, could, than heart could wish in the bottom of the seven verse, the eight verse. They are corrupt. You are a corrupt bunch of people. And speak wickedly concerning oppression. If somebody saying, you're oppressing me. You're doing wrong. You, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be dying in my land. You shouldn't be doing this. And you speak wrong wickedly against somebody telling you about you a president. They speak lofty and you ain't you ain't above nothing. You a bunch of faggots. Now a faggot gonna be holy and heavenly and upright and a lesbian. They set their mouth against the heavens. Yeah. Like in this Bible that we were reading out of, they got all these pictures of so called white people and I'm gonna show that a little later. All these so-called white people drew the Bible. They tongue walk us through the earth. You want everybody to follow your philosophy and all that. Your false Christianity. Because your so-called Christianity ain't got nothing to do with Christ or the Most High. Who we call God or the angels. You know, made everybody white. All the Israelites. When they were black people. And they still are black people. Therefore, his people return thither here, and waters of a full cup are wrung out. 
to them. Like when they go on a vacation, they were coming back, and they didn't have problems like when, when they give the black a little vacation to go on, and he come back, and he got to come back, and all these bills. And they say, how does God know the 11th verse? And is that knowledge in the most high? Talking about the Big Bang Theory. You're a bunch of dumb so-called white people. You say, and they say, how does God know? In other words, most high ain't gonna know we did this. We lied on everything. You're dumb as you can be. The angels and the and Christ and the most high, the one that made everything down there. That's why I call you a foolish bunch of people. And you're shooting at the flying saucers, which are the angels. You call them unidentified flying objects. And you see that you're going to do a damn thing with them. <laughs> your, your shots get hitting them and they ain't doing a damn thing because they are angelic forces. You don't understand that. They're in the third, they're in the fourth dimension, you dumb so-called white people. They're in the fourth. What the hell are you going to do with the fourth dimension? They're spiritual beings. They made everything. They made the weapons that you use, you dumb so-called white people. <laughs> Behold, these are the ungodly. That's telling you straight up that the so-called white man is the ungodly, it is the devil, it is the wicked. That's what ungodly means, wicked, the devil. They are the devil. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. So that's straight up telling you that the so-called white man is the wicked. Verily have I cleansed my heart in, in vain and washed my hands in innocency. That's what some of us say that wake up to, the, to this truth because it seems like we'd be catching a hard time because the wicked the vibration is still ruling. But due time they're going down. For all the day long have I been plagued. We plagued and chess in every moment. Every time I get up and look at you so-called white people and you ain't no change, I get mad as hell. I can't wait till your time to go down. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of my children. We, we try to go out there and wake up our people and they jump up and they speak for you so-called white people. They the first one to jump up, the so-called black man and black woman in the defense of you so-called white people. And you got your foot in their butt coming out of their mouth. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Yeah, because now we know the truth and we see what's going on and we're trying to wake our people up. So that's why I say it's too painful for me. Give me the next page. So we're showing you the scriptures. We're the only one that's seriously, seriously out there showing you the scriptures. Okay, let's go back up to the top of that. Okay. Until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, of God, then I understood I did in. What is the sanctuary of God? The Bible. You so-called Negroes got to get into the Bible so you can learn. Um, yeah, thank you. So that you can learn who you are because you're the Israelites. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, because you're going down, Mr. Knight, white man. Don't give a damn how hard you try not to, you're on your way out. Thou castest them down into destruction. That's where you're going. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment. They are utterly consumed with tariffs. Okay, I'm going to let it go at that. Now, what I'm showing you here, that in this Bible, the same Bible, this same uh, Bible you was reading out of, turn, turn to the back of the cover. What a read, Holy Bible in there. See? So it's a shame. It's a damn shame. I'm going to put it that way. You got all these so called white pictures through this Bible. That's Christ, Moses, Daniel, as the Israelites. As John the Baptist. And when you go and see the real pains of them, that they were black people, and when you read the scriptures like they just showed you that they were black people, it's a shame. 
Let's see that picture again. See that? On one side, they got Christ on the cross as a so-called white man. Caesar, which is really Caesar Bougier. Come up close on the boo. See that so-called white man. And you know that Christ is a black man. Now back up a little bit. Focus can come right in on it. Yeah. Now go to the next picture. Ease up on it, ease up on it. See that? They got Christ as a so-called white man and John the Baptist there with him. Now, let's go on the archaeology records test over there in Russia and different places in the world because they got pictures of, of, of Christ in the catacombs in Rome. They got no enough they have the headquarters over there talking about Christ as a so-called white man. They carry the black Madonna around. I'm going to show you that too. That they know the truth. Now, let's get out of here and let's go on to this book. Hold the mic for me. That's enough on the Bible. We close it. Because they got those same type of pictures all through that, all through that Bible. They got those same type of pictures. Now, look at this. This is a book called The Russian Icons. The Russian Icons. Come up on the picture. Come on in closer. Get the three guys at the top first. Now, on one side, with the book, come over on him a little bit. The one with the book, come back over. That's Moses. Look at it. Come in close, closer on it. Look at his head. Look at his head. That's clearly a black man. Look at his hands. Look at his face. Look at his neck. That is clearly, super clear, a black man. Who is that? Moses. Now, can you pan back over on Christ? That's Christ in the middle. Look at his face. Look at his hands. Go down to the feet, please. Look at his feet. No must, there can't be no mistake that this is a black man. This is definitely not a white man. Come, come a little closer on the feet. See the color on the feet? Go up on the hands now. See the color on the hands? Look at the face. Now do the same thing to Moses, the one holding the book. See the face? See the hands? Go down to his feet. It's definitely clear that they're black people. Now pan over further and come up. That's Elijah. Look at his face. Look at his hands. Go down on his feet. To show you that there is no mistake that this is a black man. Now, go, and since you're down on it, go down on that picture there. Come in closer. Can you come in closer? That's it. Okay, look. Uh, those are Peter, James, and John with Christ going up the hill. See, they're all black going up the mountain to the transfiguration. Go on the other side, pan on the other side. On the other side of the picture. Right there, come in closer. That's Peter, James, and John going down the mountain. They still ain't changed colors, <laughs> it's still black. And Christ, Peter, James, John, and Christ. What color they black. Now go to them on the big picture laying on the ground. The three disciples laying on the ground after they saw the transfiguration of Christ. Look at it. It's clearly that they're black men. Peter, James, and John. What color they get all three of them? Peter, James, and John. What color they move your hand, move your finger back a little bit. Well, that's you, Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. See the face? Get the face. Come up on the face. Now how you gonna tell me that ain't black people? Look at the feet. Look at the arms on the other one in the middle. Look at the feet on him. Look at the hand on the other one, the first one. That's Peter. Look at the face. Look at the hands. Look at the feet. Back down on his feet. 
There's no mistake, those are black people. And if they know the truth, get the bottom what it says on the, on, on the page over there. Yes, ma'am, let me get it. Right in there. Can you come up on that writing? See what it, see what it says there? The Orpines, the Greek transfiguration of the Lord. Okay, beginning of the 15th century, uh, cathedral of the transfiguration. Where is this at? In Moscow, in the State Gallery. Okay, now I want to show something else in this book. The picture of the 12 disciples. And it's clear that they're black again. There's too many of these pictures for it not to be the proof and the facts. And where are they, they, these are in Russia. Come up closer. Now Christ at the bottom with the crown, look at him, black. Look at the feet of the 12 disciples. Let's look at them. Let's look. He's black. That's one. Two, he's black. Three, he's black. Come on. Go on up. Four, he's black. Five, he's black. Six, he's black. Now go on the other side. Seven, he's black. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now back up. It's clear that all of those are black men. That's Christ and the twelve disciples. And this picture is supposed to be during the time of the day of Pentecost when the Spirit came in and went on them and they all spoke in the tongues in different languages. See the halos around them? Back up again. Like I said, this is when the day of Pentecost had fully come and Christ came in with the Spirit and gave them utterance and all the languages of the Israelites that was gathered together. Now let's go down and see what that is. Hold it a second so I can look and let's see what this is saying. The descent of the Holy Ghost. See, doing, that was during the time of Pentecost. Moscow Archaeological Office of the Ecclesiastical Academy. Get up on there. Get there. Come up on there. Take my glasses off. Come up on there. Right there. So what it says in Moscow, Archaeology Office of Ecclesiastical Academy. End of the 15th, beginning of the 16th centuries. No mistake, back up on the picture now. No mistake, that's super clear that those are black people. And you out there in the audience that say we ain't got the proof, you, you out of your mind. You stone cold out of your mind. We're showing you the proof. What is the name of this book? The Russian Icons. Come up on the words. The Russian Icons is the name of this book. And it's by Fla Father Fla uh, Vladimir, Father Vladimir Ivanov. Let me get the page. Come up on that, on the name at the top of the page. Russian icons, Father Vladimir Ivanov. See, we got the facts. We definitely got the facts. Now, I'm going to show you some more pictures in there. To show you that that, that was no mistake. A while ago, <laughs> you saw John the Baptist with Christ in that Bible, right? Well, look, here's John the Baptist. Come up on him. I'll wait until the camera settles down a little bit. Okay, ease in there. See that? That's clear. Back up some. Who is this? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. What color is he? Black. And look on the side. Can you get the man on the side there? Coming on him. That's 
That's Christ. What color is it? Black. Super clear. Now let's go over to the writing over that way. No, back the other way. To the writing right there. Go down to the little paragraph. Let me move my hand. The little paragraph right there. What does it say? Say the head of the prophet and precursor of the Lord, St. John the Baptist. 18th century Moscow archaeological office of the Ecclesiastic Academy. We got the facts. Let me go on. Let me show you something else I want to show you. Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, bear with me a minute. Not on this side, not on the other side of the page. Now, let's come up close on these guys and, and, and at the top. Let's start at the top. Come in, come in close on the top of it. That's the angel Gabriel. You know, the wings. Angel Gabriel announcing, it's called the Annunciation, announcing to Mary on the other side, get Mary in the picture, who is black. The angel Gabriel is black and Mary is black, announcing to her the birth of Christ. This is on door panels of a church, a cathedral over there in Russia. Pan down now. There's Matthews, Mark, with Matthews with a scribe who's black, who's an Israelite there. And Mark on the other side of him, pan over a little bit. Mark, pan down, pan on down, Luke and John. What color are they? It's obvious that they're black. Look at their hands, look at their face, they are black. Pan up. See, you can see that they're black. And let's pan back down. They tried, they stopped to rub the door down. <laughs> <laughs> well, for some reason, the Most High stopped them. They, they didn't, because they're going to rub the whole picture out. That was the beginning of rubbing the door down. <laughs> Move up. But thank the Most High that they didn't rub their faces up. Go on up. Like I said, that's the angel Gabriel, and that's Mary. Come on down. That's Matthews. Pan over. Mark. Pan down. Luke and John. Now let's see what it says in the writing. The writing's on the side of the door panel over here. Back, back the other way. Right in there where my hand is at. Okay. Let's see what this says. Central door of the iconist. Uh, on the door panels, the Annunciation, like I showed, the announcement, that's what the Annunciation made of the birth of Christ to Mary. And the Apostles, Evangelists, Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John. So that's clear that black people. And when was this? The 16th century Moscow. Archaeology Office of the Ecclesiastical Academy. They got a lot of stuff over there, don't they? Now, let's go to another picture. Right across from it. Come on close on that. That's Joseph holding the baby. The Father Christ. Joseph holding the baby there. Which is Christ. Joseph Black. Baby Black. And that's Mary right now. But and the Israelites around that came to see the shepherds and all that. What color are they? Black. Everybody in that picture is black. It's super clear. Could we pan down and, and get the reading of that? Move over some. Let me move my fingers. Come in close. The mission of the mother of God which is Mary, which she's not really the mother of God, because God, that's, 
She's the mother of Christ. Christ is not really God. So let's get some understanding on that. He's the son of the Most High. He's the son of God. 16th century Moscow Archaeology Office of the Ecclesiastical Academy. Okay, let's cut it a minute. Now, I'll come up close on this. Look, that's the Black Madonna. That's over there in Russia. This is the painting that Luke painted. I'm going to show you that on the cover of another book, and I'm going to show you that in this book that he painted, the picture of Mary and Christ. They just overlaid it with some gold down through the years, but that's the picture of Mary and Christ that he painted. That's why them devils are carrying it around. They know that Christ and Mary is black. Pan back. Look at all them so-called Europeans carrying the black picture of Mary. How they feel? Pan back. And they're not coming out with the truth. How do they feel? Going to the sun of the crowd. Look at that. Look at all them so-called white people. All them Edomites. Because we used to rule Russia. That's why them relics are left over there, Christ and all. All them Edomites. Now pan back on what, what they involved in. Pan up on that picture there. No, go up above the head. Right there. Come in. No, not that. Right ahead over the head of the white of the white hat. Come on in. That's another picture of Mary Christ, black. Now pan back and get the picture again. So this is showing you that they know the truth. Now. Okay, here's another picture of Joseph holding Christ as a baby. This is a little darker than another one. And this is supposed to be a part of the same picture. See Joseph there, you can see he's black. See the baby and the white that he's holding? You see his face is black. Look at Mary laying down there black. Look at all the people around him black. Look at the two angelic uh, uh, fault figures there with the halos around their head. They're black. No. In the corner, the white uh, cross garments. See? It's clear that everybody in that picture is black. Back up off of them a little bit. Okay, now we go to the next one. This book called the Icons got a, it's got a lot in it. Seriously, got a lot in it. Now I want to read this this statement about. You can cut it a sec. According to church tradition, according to church tradition, the icon of the Vladimir, mother of God, was painted by St. Luke the Evangelist. So I'm going to read that again. According to church tradition, the icon of the Vladimir, mother of God, was painted by St. Luke the Evangelist. What are they talking about? They're talking about this picture I showed you earlier. Let me get it again. So bear with me a second. Let me get it again. They're talking about this. That's what they're talking about. How do I further prove that this is what they're talking about? I'm going to go to another book called the Icons. Back up off of it some. That's the original picture that St. Luke painted. They just overlaid it through the years. They overlaid it with gold down through the years. That's the original painting. Now let's go and see. We just read that this is the one he painted. So now let's go to another book called the Icons. This is another book called the Icon by the Evan Brothers. By the Evan Brothers. E-V-A-N-S. Icon. Now on the cover, pull in please. Guess what they got on the cover? Guess what? 
That's Luke painting the picture of Mary and Christ. Just like we read. Now let's go to the jacket. And they're black people. Luke is black, just like I showed you on the belt panel. Mary and Christ is black, the picture he painted. Now let's go and read this in the cover of the book on the jacket and see what it says. Front of jacket uh, photography. St. Luke painted the first icon and image of the Virgin with child as depicted in this scene. Let me show you again the scene. Come up on the scene. Luke is black. Mary and Christ is black. So do we have the facts, audience? So can you so-called Negroes open your mind up? Can you so-called Negro preachers open your brains up? And can you pull that Caesar Borgia image of the so-called white man as Jesus Christ out of your churches, please? And out from over your mantelpiece, please. And out from uh, hanging in your kitchen, please. And out from hanging in your hall. And out from hanging over your bed, please. Because Christ was a black man. As I have proved without a shadow of doubt that he's a black man. Now this is in Russia. Do they got any pictures of Christ being a black man in Rome? Let's see. What do we have here? Here's a book. What is this book called? Imperial Rome. Can you come up on it? Let's get the top of it. Let's get the words up on top first. Great Ages of Man. A History of the World's Cultures. Now back up. Imperial Rome by Moses Hadass, a so-called Jew. Let's get the little writing under that. Come close on the bottom. Come close. Editors of Tithe Line Book. Editors of Tithe, I mean, I'm sorry, of Time Life Books. Editors of Time Life Books. What do that mean? That's the biggest book companies on this planet Earth. Time Life Books. Let's see what they got to show in here. This is Imperial Rome. Let's see what's happening in here. Okay, bear with me. Okay, what do we have here in this book? Now, well, that looks like Judas hanging on a tree, a black man. Look at the face. Look at the nose. Look. Look at the face and look at the nose. Hold the microphone. Look at the face of him. See the nose. See the lips. That is a black man. Who is that? Judas Issachar. Now let's go over to the next picture. You got the mic to my mouth, bro. Who's that? That's Mary. Look at her nose. Look at her lips. A black woman. Who's next to Mary? St. John. The one that would read in Revelations. Look at his nose. Look at his lips. A black man. Who's this hanging on the cross? Jesus Christ. Look at his nose. Look at his face. A black man. Who's this with his fist raised up? Caiaphas, the high priest of the Sanhedrin court. Do you look like a so-called rabbi to you? <laughs> I'm sure it don't look like that to me. He is a black man. Back up. All the people in this picture is black people. Come up close on him again. All of them are black people. Now let's get what the writing says and let's find out what year this was. Right above it. Coming close on the beginning of it, let me read it. 
Christ crucified and Judas hanging as shown and a panel done about 420 AD. Back up the crucifixion. Back up 420 AD. Is that proof? I am. Uh, are you so-called Negro looking in your eyes? Can you wipe your eyes, please? <laughs> Come close on that picture. You can see clearly that those are black people. All of them. Judas hanging on a, on a tree. Now wait until the focus come back. Judas hanging on a tree. Mary standing next to him. St. John standing next to her. Christ on the cross. Jesus Christ on the cross. Let's see the next figure. And Caiaphas the high priest. With his fist raised, probably saying crucify him, crucify him. All black. So it looks like the Israelites were all black. Let's go to another page in this book. This is Rome. This is Rome, I'm showing you now, that we have artifacts in Rome. What is this? Let's come up on this and find out what this is. Let's get on the other picture first. Get on the other side, not that, the other side. Other side, that's the catacombs. The underground city in Rome where they buried the dead. That's the catacombs. Now, come on that little writing. See that little writing right next to it, right there? Come in close on it. Christ and the apostles as seen in a fresco. Come up a little closer. That's it. That's it. Oh. As seen in a fresco from a Roman catacomb. Wait, underground city in Rome. A Roman catacomb. Let's look at the painting now. Christ and the apostles above that, right there. Hey, damn sure ain't white people. Are you so-called Negroes looking? Can you see? That's Christ right there, a black man. And they try to do a little work to that picture, but you can still see that they're black people. They try to wipe some of it down. But look at Christ there. And look at the disciple right behind him there. Let me point to some of this. Come back. Let me point to some of this. Oh, you gotta hold the mic up, brother. Hold it. Yeah. Let me point to some of this. Hold it up to my mouth. You just concentrate on me. You concentrate on looking at the picture. That's Christ. You can see that plainly. And behind him, right over there behind him, that's a black man. And the rest of them going back, look at the hand of black men. That is super clear. Look at this. Can you back the picture over there where my hand's going? Yeah. See the hand up there? See that hand? That's black. Show me that they're black. You're trying to wipe your face down a little bit. But look, you can see they're black. This guy, they try to wipe his face down. Look, but look at his hands. Look at his fingers. We got you, so-called white devil. We've got to write you. We got you. Now go back over. That's Christ and the 12 apostles. Where is this at? Go back, bring the picture in focus. Go back on the picture. Go back up on it. That's Christ and the 12 apostles. Which color are they? Get Christ right in the middle. Go right on it. What color are they? Black. Now let's pan down at the bottom. In the corner right there. In the corner right there. That's Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Look at the hands, black. Look at the face, black. Those are definitely black men. You can see that crystal clear. Now let's pan down on the writing. It says, catacomb art often featured Old Testament scenes like these. Three Hebrew boys Three Hebrews in the fiery furnace. Let's read that again. Catacomb, catacomb art often.
featured Old Testament scene. You know what that means? There's a lot of these pictures down there in the catacombs. Go back on them as the three Hebrew boys and the, the Hebrews in the fiery furnace, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. So what is that telling you that Daniel and all the Israelites at that time were black people? That all the Israelites during the time of Christ were black people? That the Israelites are, are so-called black people, mainly the so-called Negroes, West Indian, and Puerto Ricans of the day, as we're teaching you. We're the only ones out there bringing you this truth. Now let's look through this book and let's see if they got another picture of Christ. Look at that. This is Christ as a young man. Look at the hair on his head. Look at his body. It is definitely that he's a black man. Let's go down to the bottom. Look at the legs. Even though he got on boots. Look at his legs. Now go down. Go down some. Well, really what he, what he got on is some high sandal strap things. And they tried to mock and mess that up, but they didn't do a good job because the picture you can see is still a black man. Let's go on the writing. A Romanized Christ is shown as the good shepherd in this painting found in a Christian catacomb. Go back up on the picture again. That is super clear. That definitely ain't no white boy. Now let's go from there and let's see who Demetrius and the gladiators were in the arena. Let's see who the gladiators were. They lied. Yes, they lied about that too. This old movie that they show every once in a while on cable, Demetrius and the gladiators. Guess what? They were black Christian Jews. As I shall show. We can cut it. All right, let's get the guys at the top of this picture first. The magicians, everybody, because everybody is black. Let's go with them. See, these are all black men. See, they try to doctor him up, wipe him down a little bit, but look at him, he's black. The one behind the pulpit thing is black. They're the play, the playing horns and all that. They're all black. Look at the one there with the beard. Almost look like Christ. Come up, come up on him. In the white garment. They were Jews. And the guys playing got beards. They all got beards because they were Jews. And the guys fighting and they got killing each other. They're Jews too. They're blacks. Read on. Black Jews. Who are real Jews. Look at him. Look at this guy with his beard. Move on. Mm -hmm. All those gladiators are black men. Look at one right there in the road. They were Christian Jews. Move down. Because the Christians are the Jews. See, that's another fallacy they got out there. Like the Christians are something different. The Christians were Jews. In the beginning, these people run around talking about they Christians today. The so-called white man and all these other nations, they're not Christians because the Christians in which need the anointed are the Jews. You dumb ignorant people. And they're in the arena fighting. Now let's move over to the writing. See what it says. Now the one with the whip had to be in because they were Israelites. Back over, the one with the whip. Back over, back over, back over, right there. So you got a whip in his hand, back up to the top of it. So he has a whip in his hand. Come up close on him. See his bed, see his face, see the black man. Move over, a Jew. You're gonna move over to the right. They're all Jews. They try to wipe him down some, but he's, these are all Jews in the region. Move back. And they had us fighting each other, fighting bulls. Get on the birds now, over here on the corner. Over here. Gladiators often fought with mismatched 
mismatched weapons. Negroes are a rare sight in Rome, which was a damn lie, because I'm going to prove that's a damn lie right now. A rare sight in Rome. They got some damn nerve. Let's, let's see if Negroes were a rare sight in Rome. Because the Negroes is talking about the Christian Jews. Mm, let's pan over here and see what we find. Let's see what we find over here. What do we find over here? What? The Tetrax. Four major rulers of the Roman Empire. Look at the one that got a beard over his face right there. Let me see if I can move my hand up over, over there and show it. Let me see. Come back on the picture. Back up some more. On it. That picture is what I want to show. Right there. You're going off of it. You're going off of it completely. Them are the two guys in front. I want to get those two guys in back. Okay, come up close on the guy in the middle there. Come up close on him. See, so he got a beard around his face. Oh. Okay, back the camera up. That's what I want, the guy right there. Because that guy is Diocletian, like it says in the league. So he got a beard on his face because he's a Jew. And the guy next to him, I notice that their nose are broke off. All their noses are broke off. But the brother can point to that. All the noses are broke off of him. Chisel off. That didn't fall off. And point to the beard on his face. Okay? And point to the noses again on both of them. See? And point to the nose over there. You can see they were black men. It's clear that they're going to go on the next pictures. See, their nose is all knocked off in the same place. And they're all black men. Now pan back and get the whole picture. Pan back and get the rest of the picture down to their feet. And now pull in at the feet at the base of the statue because they were Getting ready to change the color, the whole thing. We, we, uh, hold the book a minute. Hold one side of the book. You got to get on the other side. Because I, well, yeah. See that white part they're showing there? Where is that? Yeah, but you're out of the picture. Bring it back in the picture, because I, right there. See how he was getting ready to make, remake the whole thing over again? They're <laughs> change the whole structure, the whole thing. But those are black men. Just pan up on their faces again. Clearly show that they're black men. And who are these guys? Let's go in the, in the, in the reading on the other side, on the other page. Right there. Come in on it. Let me read it to the viewers. Sharing the room. The Tetrax, whom Diocletian, come on, second from life, established to help administrate the empire in 293 AD. I thought Negroes was a rare sight in Rome. Didn't they just say that Negroes was a rare sight in Rome? Let's go back up on that pitch again. So Diocletian, is here. Right, right there. That's Diocletian. And uh, Maximian is in this picture. And also uh, Constantius and uh, uh, Galerius is in this picture. Uh, Diocletian, Constantius, Maximian, and Galerius. That's who's in this picture. And they were rulers of the Roman Empire in 293 AD. Now let's go from there. Okay. Now you see that all these are black.
black men, look at them, do it. They're all black men. Now, the one in the middle, let's pan down and see what it says down at the bottom. Administrator of the law. Council Magnus is shown in a leaf from an ivory panel carved in 518 A.D. I thought we were supposed to be rare in Rome. <laughs> Move up on the picture now. So from these pictures I'm showing you that we were in Rome, do it look like we were rare in Rome? Look at the lines of Judah, which is synonymous right, with the so-called right, Negro. Right, two lines of Judah, one on each side, because they were Jews. Pull back up on the picture again. You can clearly see that they're all so-called Negroes. So was the so-called Negro ran wrong? See, I'm proving the lie that the man put in the book. Now, come, come back, let's go, cut it off again. That one over there. It is kind of hard to point while you're holding the book. And look at it. Not that one, the other picture. Now, they said that Negro was red in Rome. That's a Negro right there they tried to wipe out. Come up on him. Come up close on him. Come up close on the guy that's dead. See, they try to wipe his head off and everything, but you can see that he's a black man and he's selling bread. He's a baker selling bread. Now, pan down on the people that stand in front of him. They're all, they try to wipe him out. They try to wipe the face of the guy out next to him. The one under him that might be a, a small guy or a child, they try to wipe him out. They were all black people. Now, let's pan down to the reading. You see what it says in the reading, four, right there. A baker's stall on the street above offered fresh bread, offered fresh bread and cakes. Back up on the picture now. So so-called Negroes go back on the guy up, up on the selling the bread. So so-called Negroes were not a rare sight in Rome. That was a, a rare lie they told. Okay. Now I'm going to go over here to the registry. Now we showed you the four tetracts and that they were black men, but they got Diocletian over here as a white man. I'm going to show you both of these pictures. Now, in this picture, the second guy here, come up on him. You know, back up. The one behind that deer with the beard, come up on him. That's Diocletian, the one with the beard. Now, guess what? Over here, Over here, they said, this was Diocletian. Now, that looks nothing like the picture I just showed you over there. Come up on it again so they can see his name. Can you get it? Yeah. Yeah, Diocletian. Now, that don't look nothing like this statue over here. Because that's a white man and this is a black man. Now let's go back down to the, the reading on the other side of the page again and read where this is at. It says, share in the room, the Tetrax, whom Diocletian second from right, established to help administrate the empire in 293 AD, are shown embracing in this stone sculpture now standing in the Piazza di San Marco in Venice. Now that's amazing. Is that not amazing? That is truly amazing. Come up on the picture again. 
that is truly amazing. So you can't deny that we got the truth. We're showing you the truth straight up. What's the name of this book? Imperial Rome. We've definitely got the facts. Imperial Rome. Guess what? This was copyrighted in 1965. Okay, now I'm going to go to a few other books and then I'm going to close. Here's another book called the Icons, if you can get the name on the bottom. Introduced by T. Talbot Rice. Let's see what they got in here. Solomon, let's look for Solomon. What color is Solomon when he first took the throne as a young boy? Solomon. What color is he? A black boy. Age 17. Let's go over here on the right at the top there. Details from a traveling icon. Uh, says the prophet Solomon. Let's go on there. Uh, reading under that. No reading under that. School of Moscow, late 15th century. We definitely got the proof. That's Solomon. Now, if Solomon was black at 17, what was his father? Let's go to another book now. Called The Icons. This book is by the Evans Brothers, called The Icons. Now, let's go on this book. And let's see if we can find David. Now, at the top of this page, pull on in, the one with the crown on his head is King David. Coming closer on him. So there cannot be no mistake. Look at his face. He's a black man. Look at his hand. Look at the down on his hand. These devils keep saying that he's red. Because it says Adamothi in the Hebrew, which means reddish, which when it was speaking about him, that he was a youth and Adamothi, he was a youngster and Adamothi, he was a young man and Adamothi means tender. Dad meant tender, not, not red. It meant tender. Because it's obvious that he's a black man. Come up on him. Come up on him. Come up on him. He's a black man. Who is this? King David. Look at his hand. It's a black man. Now let's pan down in the reading. And let's see. Pan down in the reading. The reading. Above right, the virgin and thoughtful child and the prophet's detail. Prophet David. That's what we just looked at. That's Prophet David. And next to him, let's move over, is Moses. And down at the bottom, picture at the bottom, is Andrew. With that, let me show one more thing. No, two more books, and then I'm going to close up. This book is called The Art Treasures of Russia. Did you come up on the writing? Art Treasures of Russia. Now, who is it by? Let's go down to the bottom. Who is it by? Text by M. W. Alpatov. Okay. Now look on the cover. That's a black man on the cover there. One of the priests in Russia. Now let's go down in the corner. That's a war scene of 1552. 
Um, Ivan the Terrible, everybody in there is black. Everybody in that picture is black. Now I'm going to go on the book to that war scene. Show you that we were ruling Russia. Oh, this white man lied about a lot. He lied about a lot of stuff. We were the Knights of the Round Table. We were St. George the Dragon Slayer, because that's in here. Let me show you that right now. That's St. George. I'm damn sure ain't white. St. Saint, Saint George the Dragon Slayer. Damn sure ain't white. show them to you one more time so you know that wasn't a mistake. So now here's St. George again to show you that wasn't a mistake. Pull back you see the dragon down there he's slain. St. George the dragon killer. The dragon slayer. Come up on him. See his black leg there in his boots and his black hand. He's a black man. Look at his face. That's the army of Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Terrible, they even really show him in the picture. They made his picture small. Go, go pound to the other picture. To the next picture. Right there above. Run up on that. The gray horse. Run up on the one right there. Right there, the gray horse. That's Ivan the Terrible. They wouldn't come up on him. <laughs> And go to the guy that you see standing behind that we just went to, right? And the whole army, everybody black. Look at all them black faces and all that. That was in 1552 when he was ruling in Russia. Back up on a picture, show the bottom of it. The bottom picture. He was just on it. Move down the bottom of the page. Right there. Look at it. It's obvious that they're black, so it can't be no mistake. It's obvious that they're black. Pan the whole picture there. Yeah, move down. See, they just showed you part of part of the horse of I'm in the terrible up there. Go back up to the horse. Horse's butt there. But they wouldn't show him big. Ain't they some devils? Cool. What do you think about that, Kazak? They some devils. They, they, cool they show the bottom of his feet and his horse, but but they wouldn't show him. Panning on a guy carrying a red banner. And that was on the nest ray, and behind him in the red cape is St. George, the dragon slayer. So St. George was real. That was in 1552. How many devils trying to say that was a miss? He was real. This is a battle from 1552, and it tells you in the writing that he was dead. Okay, with that, well, I showed you a lot, and there's more to come. We're going to flood the airwaves, the TV, the radio, the streets, the newspapers with the power of the most high. He's going to cause us to be raised up so that you so-called Negroes can't get away from it. You ain't going to be able to hide from it. And the so-called white man ain't going to be able to hide from it. We're going to learn the truth regardless. Whether you like it, no matter how much you love this so-called white man, how much you love this woman, his children, this truth is coming out. With that, I'm going to say shalom until the next time.